Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And while you're here, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you get notified whenever new videos get uploaded. Now in this video, let's talk about XG Boost, which is, uh, if you're familiar with Random Forest, think of this as, uh, think of this as an algorithm that you can use instead of random forest now whether it is better than random forest or deep learning uh, at least let's uh, let's let's have a quick look at it as part of this uh, as part of this uh, video now let's jump in uh, xg boost stands for extreme gradient boosting now i'm not sure if you are familiar with boosting gradient boosting so let me quickly cover what these are so it puts xg boost in perspective okay first of all boosting is uh, it builds models from individual weak learners first of all a weak learner for example you have a decision tree what is a decision tree okay uh, for example would you like to take a job offer well is it above certain salary yes well is it close to work yes well, uh, do they offer great benefits? No. Well, probably you don't, you don't want to take that job, right? This is a basic decision tree. But these are only three features that I just talked about. In reality, you may have tens or hundreds of features for a given data set, okay? So an individual weak learner or a tree is not enough. You put multiple trees together, this is where random forest comes into picture, right? In random forest, you're building multiple trees, but while building it, all the features are not available. You're taking only a subset of features to build a tree, okay? So uh, boosting builds, very similar to random forest, models from individual weak learners. Now, unlike random forest, in boosting, these models are not completely built on random subsets, okay? These are not built on random subsets. Instead, they are sequentially put, uh, uh, it, it puts more weights on instances with wrong predictions. This is just like us. Uh, if we want to get better, we look at where we fail and we try to fix it and we get better in life and in uh, at work or somewhere. So that's exactly what boosting actually does. Based on the weak learners, it says, okay, now I know why you're, you know, why why you failed and then it gets better. So it puts more emphasis on, uh, on successful models and uh, uh, of course also on the wrong predictions and it learns from this. That's what boosting is. And gradient boosting, the name gradient comes from the fact that it uses gradient descent algorithm, the same thing that deep learning actually uses, right? Uh, to find this minima in the loss function, it uses exactly the same uh, gradient descent function. Now, XG boost, okay, is related to boosting. Well, in fact, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, an advanced version of boosting or an optimized version of boosting. And it's developed by University of Washington very recently, just four years ago, okay, in 2016 and uh, numerous Kaggle competitions have been won using gradient boosting or XG boost, I should say. Not every data set requires deep learning. In fact, before thinking of deep learning, think of traditional machine learning and if it can be used. And oftentimes XG boost uh, performs equally well, if not outperforms uh, certain deep learning algorithms. So try to use XG boost as, uh, if you need like two tools in your toolkit, I used to say random forest, but after using gradient boosting or XG boost, I'm super convinced that all you need is XG boost for 90% of the cases. And for very complicated cases where you have a lot of annotated data, deep learning is probably a good approach, but XGBoost does an amazing job most of the time. And uh, uh, users, uh, uh, I should say, uh, how is XGBoost different than boosting? It requires a lot of math to explain this, and I'll uh, leave the description or a link to a video where the actual authors you know, explain this in a very uh, detailed way. But to summarize this, it computes second order gradients to figure out direction of gradients. These are some of the highlights of this, okay? Why does that matter? Well, what is a gradient? A gradient is a derivative, right? I mean, uh, what does it tell you? Uh, for a straight line, it gives you the slope. Uh, or even for any curve, it gives you the slope at that specific point. What does that mean? Uh, well, it just tells you the slope. Now, the second order tells you with the direction of that slope. Okay, so if in gradient descent, you're trying to find the minima. So if you're heading the wrong direction with second uh, uh, second order gradient, you already know that you that's not the right direction. You have to go to the opposite direction. So this is a bit optimized by using the second order uh, gradient where it figures out the right direction uh, to move. And it also uses uh, advanced uh, L1 and L2 regularization. Again, regularization prevents overfitting. In deep learning, we do, for example, uh, 
uh, dropout as one of our regularization uh, methods. So here it uses L1 and L2 to prevent this overfitting. And random forest can, depending on the number of trees and everything, you can actually uh, get a bit overfitting. Uh, and L1 and L2 are built into XGBoost, so uh, that's taken care of. And finally, parallelization is the best aspect of this. It's super fast. In fact, when we run this later on, we can fire up our uh, processors to see how all the processors are being efficiently used and uh, that's why this is uh, uh, pretty fast. So it's uh, it's basically an optimized boosting algorithm, XGBoost. Now, going back to the graphic I showed you earlier in the, in the title screen, the reason I use this is I really think that starting with the decision trees all the way to XGBoost is really a true evolution where the, the uh, decision tree is just a basic flowchart. To use the same example I used earlier, okay, is the salary above certain thing? Yes, take the job. Is it near to the home? Yes, take the job, right? So this is basically a decision tree. It works fine for these type of simple scenarios, but what if you have many features in a complicated uh, example? So this is where you get bagging, where you combine the predictions from multiple decision trees, okay? Uh, I try to use an analogy of, uh, for those of uh, my friends uh, from, uh, for example, from India, most of you are used to arranged marriages, right? Okay, and then uh, you're like, okay, uh, uh, your parents are looking for, uh, you know, a groom or a bride, uh, and there are many criteria, right? Okay, so the criteria is, do they work? What is their educational level? How much do they earn? And uh, uh, are they good looking? You know, what is the height? What is the weight? There are so many parameters. Now, uh, when uh, decision tree is basically okay, is the salary above this? Is this above that? Is this above this? But oftentimes life is not that simple. You cannot just say, okay, salary is good and this is good and this is good. There are other attributes that different people look at. Probably your mom looks at a lot more uh, on a different side of, you know, the story than your dad. So, uh, uh, so in this example, you combine the predictions. So bagging is, okay, bring all the family members together. They all look at uh, different attributes and they say, oh, based on that, I vote for this guy or this girl. And based on this, I vote. It may sound ridiculous and weird for people who are not used to this culture, but 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 this is how it is. This is how it used to be decades ago or centuries ago everywhere. Okay. Uh, uh, and I thought most of you may uh, relate to this when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, bagging and then uh, random forest. So here what happens is uh, uh, bagging is basically all your family members are going to vote and then you get 20 votes for candidate one, 10 votes for candidate two, three votes for candidate three, then the candidate one wins, right? This is basically democracy. That's exactly what uh, bagging is. It combines the predictions from multiple decision trees. Now, random forest is very similar, except it takes a subset of features. So instead of saying, okay, height, weight, and salary, and job, and all of these, let's just take only three of these features and then vote. And the other family member, random three features, and then vote, right? So it takes only a subset of these, and then you're voting it, and then again, you're basically looking at this majority voting. So that's what random forest is. And it's, it's, it addresses uh, overfitting a little bit, but uh, you'll still have some overfitting when you do random forest. Now, boosting, unlike random forest, it's not going to take this random subset. It actually does sequentially uh, minimizing the errors from previous models, okay? Now, uh, if I want to stick with this arranged marriage analogy, this is think of this as, okay, uh, your uncle, you know, votes for something and then uh, your mom goes to your uncle and says, hey, why did you vote for this? And then learns from that. And then based on that, and based on, sorry about this, based on that, based on that, uh, you modify your vote. So basically, your models, you know, it, 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 it is influenced by the past models, okay? And then it boosts on high-performing models. So if there is a model that's high-performing, you get that. That's where the boosting term com comes into the picture. Now, finally, uh, gradient boosting is very similar to boosting, except uh, for uh, the loss function, it uses the gradient descent. That's pretty much it. Okay, and XGBoost is the most evolved version of this of this uh, of this algorithm, which is it's optimized for both speed and uh, you know also accuracy. So uh, 
uh, uh, because of parallelization, regularization, tree pruning, etc. So now let me show you a slide that got, uh, it's not a, uh, I don't think this is from a uh, technical publication, but I took this from Google search where I saw, like, did anyone do any of these tests? Someone uh, apparently did this, where they compared XGBoost against gradient boosting, random forest, and logistic regression. And in all of the, in both these ca categories uh, of accuracy and training time, XGBoost is far superior to anything else here. So as you can see, the accuracy is the best of all, and the training time is, when you compare with random forest, that's uh, 20 times slower, right? Near 20 times, 18 to 19 times uh, faster, sorry, not slower, right there. And compared to gradient boosting, much, much faster anyway, and you get the same type of accuracy. And if you compare this with Keras Deep Learning, again, this is uh, 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 something I found online. The link is down here. Uh, the accuracy is uh, slightly better on the data sets that they have tried compared to Keras Deep Learning. And the recall is also much better. False negatives, much better. And all these other things are uh, inconclusive because they are tough to compare because there are way too many hyperparameters in uh, Deep Learning and also in XGBoost. Now, uh, if you really would like to learn more about this, then uh, I'll leave this link in the description. This is uh, directly from the authors. I think this is like one and a half hour video that talks about a lot of math, I should say. Okay, and all the information. So I think if you have any doubts about XGBoost under the hood, this is probably answers. And also, let's look at the documentation of XGBoost. So if you just go ahead and Google search for XGBoost, you'll get to this documentation uh, uh, page where they talk about the installation. It's just pip install XGBoost. And uh, they'll also mention, uh, talk about uh, all the hyperparameters, what you can tune. For example, learning rate is a hyperparameter here. Why? Because it uses gradient descent and you know gradient descent, learning rate is one of the hyperparameters anyway. So uh, you can learn more about it uh, by going to their documentation directly. Now let's jump into our spot. Spider IDE to talk about uh, 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 how to use XGBoost in one of the applications. And uh, 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 let's go through this line by line. I'll not take too much time because I've uh, explained this use case for uh, you know random forest in the past. Uh, but I do acknowledge that most of you are new, so I'll not completely skip through this. Okay, first of all, to in uh, install XGBoost, pip install XGBoost works fine. I did not encounter any issues. The data set we are going to work with uh, is the Wisconsin breast cancer data set. I'll leave the link uh, uh, to download this, or you can just Google search for Wisconsin breast cancer data set, and, or you can work with your own data. That's fine. It's, uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Here in this data set, what we are trying to predict is the diagnosis, which is, is this benign or malignant? Okay, so this is what we are trying to predict using all the attributes that are given here. These are all the attributes or measurements that they have performed. And based on this, we are trying to say, is this uh, malignant or benign? Okay, now let's go ahead and start importing our libraries, pandas for data handling, Seaborn for plotting. And uh, I downloaded this as a CSV file. So let's go ahead and uh, read that as a data frame. And let's go ahead and describe it to see exactly what we have. And let me explain. So total 569 uh, entries. As you can see up here, my data frame has 569 rows, 32 columns. The diagnosis column is our Y value or is the one that we are trying to predict. And everything else are attributes except for this ID. ID is probably the ID of the patient, so we don't need that. Uh, we have to drop that as part of our X values. But if you look at uh, these values, they range from tens to one hundredth to one thousandth to 1000. So going from 0 0.001 to 1000, you have six orders of magnitude, which means we have to normalize the data. Again, these are the stuff that we covered in many, many videos, but it's worth repeating. Okay, now the next thing I usually do is, is any of the rows or columns empty? Looks like none of these are empty, so we're good, okay? Otherwise, we can drop those rows or we can fill them with some of the mean values and use one of the tricks we learned as part of our pandas. Okay, uh, let me rename this diagnosis column as label. So we it is clear that, okay, we are trying to use this as a label. And finally, let's look at the data types. All of these are numbers, so float 64, except for this label, which is an object, because this is uh, either M or B, like malignant or benign. 
okay so let's go ahead and uh, quickly plot it to have a quick look at how the numbers are distributed so i have about a little over 200 m labeled as m and uh, about 350 as b benign uh, benign is a bit overrepresented, but i'm still confident that we'll get very good uh, very good fit but if you want to further you know balance these data sets again watch my video on imbalanced uh, handling imbalanced data um, let's go ahead and uh, replace these categorical values with numbers so what we are trying to do is let's go ahead and open this uh, the label here is m or b right m or b this doesn't work for our modeling we have to convert that into zero or one or one or two some something that the computer can understand so we'll do that right now okay so first of all let's separate our y okay let's define our y our y is the data frame column label and let's just take the values which means we'll get a numpy array so our y is again a numpy array of values m and b now we need to convert that and for that we use encoding right we have done this again in many many times in the past so we are going to use scikit-learn's pre-processing label encoder and define the label encoder and fit transform remember you can always go back to reverse transform right to get your original labels back which we'll do later on so we apply this label encoder to fit transform right here so immediately you'll get your y as uh, sorry our uppercase y as ones and zeros okay one being m and zero being benign that's that's pretty much it so we defined our y this is all data handling nothing to do with xgboost i'll get to that in a second x is all the columns except for the columns label label and id we already established that so nothing to explain there now we looked at the numbers and the range from uh, uh, you know the six orders of magnitude so it does make sense to scale them uh, or normalize them okay so i like min max scalar or you can try standard scalar so let's go ahead and scale those so our values all go between uh in fact i should have used standard scalar but but uh, min max scalar uh, works fine I, again all, all it's doing is scaling the values between the minimum and uh, maximum values so if uh, so that's what min max is doing so if we open x you should see that now all values are kind of in the same range okay now previously Oh, well let's actually run these lines too we have 569 data sets so let's take 25 percent of those as test size and the remaining 75 percent as the training size that's exactly what we are trying to do did i do 25 percent yeah so let's go ahead and run that and now our x train actually has 426 data points and x test has 143 okay again nothing tricky Previously, we did random forest classifier and uh, using our model with 10 estimators or something, but let's skip that. Let's actually use uh, do XG boost right now. In fact, let's go ahead and do random forest. Sorry, let's let's do random forest so we can compare. OK, so random forest. And uh, once we do that, let's go ahead and separate this. Let's fit this model. Remember, our model is random forest. Let's go ahead and fit my x train and y train to random forest and then let's go ahead and predict it on our test data set right the remaining 25 percent on our test data set so our y predict is right here so these are all the predicted values now are they uh, uh, how accurate are they now we have to compare that with the true y values which is our y test okay and then let's uh, print out the accuracy score let's go ahead and print out the accuracy score in fact, let's print it. We just calculated. It's 95.1%. Okay, that's actually excellent. That's not bad. And uh, let's go ahead and print the confusion matrix and have a quick look at it. So if we look at this, uh, 84, 52, and five wrongs, and uh, two wrongs right here for benign and malignant. This is not bad. Random forest is actually not bad, and this data set is probably too easy anyway. Uh, try this on uh, more difficult use cases, but good enough for demonstration. Now, instead of uh, random forest, now let's actually do XG boost, and the use is exactly the same. You have, uh, yeah, we are importing our XG boost, and within XGB, you have XGB classifier, you have XGB regressor. If you are predicting, uh, if you're doing a regressing, 
regression problem uh, you can uh, do regressor but in this case obviously this is a classification classifier i'm not defining any parameters but you can do learning rates and a whole bunch of things uh, uh, right there okay so let's go ahead and uh, define that and fit it to our x train and y train exactly the same as you can see instead of random forest i'm just using this that's it and let's uh, do everything exactly the same and the accuracy is 96.5 I'm just using default values. I'm pretty sure once you tune hyperparameters, you can you can improve this uh, further. And looking at the confusion matrix, now we have uh, uh, 87, uh, po uh, you know, positive. What is zero? Sorry, zero is benign. So 87 correctly identified as benign. 55 correctly identified as malignant, and two and three wrongly identified with random forest. We had 84, 52, 5, and 2. Random forest is not bad, but as you can see, uh, uh, you know, XGBoost is uh, uh, slightly more accurate. It's probably faster, but this data set is fast anyway. In the next video, I'm going to apply this to, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do semantic image segmentation, which means we are going to classify each pixel in an image. Okay, now if it's a large image, then that's tremendous amount of data and hopefully we'll see a change in speed between random forest and XGBoost when we do that, okay? But I hope you found this tutorial to be useful and uh, if so, even if you don't, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'm pretty sure you'll find one of my future videos to be very useful if you don't find this to be useful. So thank you very much and again, let's meet in the next video.